Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. We've got a brand new liquid cooler from MSI today. It is the MAG Core Liquid E240. This thing is fully loaded with RGB lighting and it is fully compatible with pretty much every CPU out there, every desktop CPU that is, and uh, that includes AMD Socket AM5, Socket AM4, and also Intel's LGA 1700, plus the previous versions of Intel sockets as well, going back a few years. So whatever CPU you have, more than likely that this thing is gonna fit your motherboard without any adapters required. So thumbs up there. Also, the radiator is probably the most well packaged radiator I've seen in a liquid cooler. It not only had the cardboard surround, but it had a, a plastic film over it as well. Just means that um, there's less chances of the radiator fins being dinged and paint flaking off and that kind of stuff. So the end result is this absolutely pristine radiator. Probably a bit of a side thought there, but I was just actually quite impressed with that. And as you know, I unbox a lot of radiators here on this channel, whether it's for custom liquid cooling or liquid coolers like this one. So. 240 millimeters is reasonable in size. It's not as big as some of the coolers out there, but it does mean that it is going to be able to fit in most cases, even small form factor ones. And that's uh, very, very handy as why coolers like this are some of the most popular on the market. So in terms of price, we are looking at around $100, maybe a little bit more, and around 100 pounds here in the UK as well. So 100 bucks, 100 pounds, um, fairly standard for a an RGB enabled liquid cooler. There are some that are cheaper. There are some that are more expensive, usually featuring software control or other paraphernalia that most of us, to be honest, we don't need um, in this day and age with motherboards with their excellent EFIs and fan control suites. And that's kind of what MSI is kind of tapping into here. It's obviously got some great motherboards itself and you can use its command center to actually control those fans and indeed the pump because the pump is PWO and controlled as well. So not so much um, going, not so much going on here in terms of extra features such as you know, fan hubs and easier ways to plug everything in to avoid all the cable spaghetti. We do have some daisy chainable RGB uh, connectors for the fans, uh, but that's pretty much it. So the pub, fairly standard affair. You've got a PWM cable just running up here that you'll need to connect to your motherboard, probably at 100% speed. Um, you can tune it down though, so you don't have to run it at 100% speed. You can do some investigations to see uh, the impact in your system. And a an, uh, three pin ARGB connector as well. So both the pump fans um, are all ARGB, so they need a spare three pin header on your motherboard and that gives its own benefits with funky rainbow lighting effects and color cycling and all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to be seeing how this thing fares against an Intel Core i5-12600K coming to some conclusions at the end. So first I'd love to thank MSI for sending over this video and uh, also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with lots more hardware very, very soon. So don't forget if you do subscribe, turn on that notification button and don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. Let me know what you think about MSI's new cooler, about my other videos and other suggestions. What cooler are you using at the moment? Are you considering an upgrade? Love hearing your thoughts in the comments. So without further ado, let's crack on. So we have some thermal and noise testing to go through now then, and uh, we've got a couple of other coolers to compare it against, the Noctua U12S Redux and Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo White, which have been through my new test system. And uh, we can see here that the thermal result of uh, 76 degrees C was the lowest temperature managed by those two coolers. The MSI Core Liquid E240 though managed a CPU temperature of 67 degrees C and these are all with a, an ambient temperature of 23 degrees. So a uh, 9 degree drop in the CPU temperature with uh, compared to the Noctua so that's an excellent result. Obviously we're dealing with a much more expensive cooler with two fans and a large radiator so you're kind of going to expect um, some significantly better results and these aren't even the best air coolers out there either so moving on to the noise levels now then and uh, we've got a result of 50 dba for the msi cooler and that's a fair bit louder than those two coolers as well the fans on this radiator um shifting a lot of air and uh, you may well want to tune them down um from their maximum speed not least of all because you're getting really really good cooling at, at full speed you probably don't need that much cooling and you can easily wind them in and wind the uh, the pump down as well to uh, get better noise levels. Now the pump does make a little bit of noise at full speed. Um, if you're if the rest of your system is super quiet, 
even under load and you have the pump running at full speed, then you're probably going to notice it outside the case. Um, it just has a very slight whine to it. Um, nothing really unpleasant. And to be honest, it would be drowned out by most of the other noise in most systems. Um, but if you've got a super quiet system, then uh, the benefit of having a PWM pump, in which you do in this case, is that you can connect it to your motherboard and you can just tune it back a bit so uh, you basically cancel out that noise and uh, you, you won't probably see that much uh, of an increase in temperatures either. So that's it for the thermal results. So what do we make of the Accor Liquid E240 then? Well, it's a pretty solid cooler for the cache. I was very, very impressed with the build quality of this thing. The fans, sure, they spin up fairly uh, fairly fast and fairly loud at full speed, but you'd kind of expect that from most liquid coolers. The pump remained relatively quiet during testing, but the critical thing is you can actually tune it down. It does have a PWM header on there, and depending on your system, you probably won't notice that much of a drop in the performance either. So in terms of dealing with mid-range CPUs, absolutely up there. Um, probably more than able to deal with something like a 13600K, 13700K as well. If I was going to go for a 30, uh, 13900K or one of AMD's really high-end CPUs, I might want to just up the ante with a 360mm radiator, but this thing would probably be more than capable of handling a high-end CPU as well. So. That's it from me today. I'd like to thank MSI again for sending this over. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will be back soon.